Just got my first auction win from Whatnot. I'm gonna open this up, see if the book grades out, and give you a little review of the platform. Here we go. All right, so this is an auction winning off of Whatnot, and it is a, a mobile or online platform for live auctions. They basically took what people were doing on Instagram with their live sales and converted it into an app and a platform where um, I think it probably just makes it a little bit easier for folks buying and selling collectibles. Uh, you have items kind of show up and have descriptions and everything like that, whereas Instagram, it's just a live video, and you're just relying on somebody just like putting something up in the camera, and you know, whatnot, I think, takes it a step further. It's not perfect, but what I've been receiving some feedback uh, and, and some questions around where I get my books, and I was told that I could get a lot of deals on whatnot. Now, I believe that a lot of things that people are telling you, advice that you're being given, I think most of it's genuine. I do feel like there are no ulterior motives. <clears throat> However, uh, the cynic in me is always very skeptical around hearing, you should go buy from this place, or you should do this, you should do that. Um, because I feel like that's part of the hype machine. It's part of uh, trying to elevate either a comic book or a platform when it doesn't need to be. It doesn't really make sense. You know, if I was on here every video just hyping eBay as the best place in the world and then you realize I sell books there, it just gets a little weird. So I do feel like the advice to check out Whatnot was genuine. Uh, however, I've been told to check out Whatnot for as long as it's been in existence uh, as the place to be. So, of course, instead of just talking about it and just spewing opinions, I wanted to actually go through the experience. So a little bit of this video is, is the review, and you'll just kind of hear the review as I uh, unbox this comic. So this was a single comic book order from Torpedo Comics during one of their live sales. And if you're not familiar with them, they're based out of Las Vegas. Um, they do have a small online presence, but really they're using social media and other platforms to sell books. So let me get to the unboxing and I'll continue talking about uh, the experience uh, with whatnot and, you know, kind of my two cents and a quarter as far as, you know, whether or not it's, it's a viable option for buying comics. So again, this was shipped uh, first class from Torpedo. And I would say as a buyer, the experience of winning a book and actually going through the entire process of paying for it and checking out. Um, according to the email that I have, I, I've chosen what not direct. I didn't know I chose that. But according to that, as soon as you win a book, uh, you have your account linked to your PayPal. It's all automatic. So as soon as you win, you get the confirmation and you get the confirmation that you've paid for the book. So in that respect, if you're comfortable with that, it's a pretty slick experience. There's no like, especially from a seller perspective, there's there's no like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll write you a check for your comics and get it to you in a couple of weeks. Um, as a seller, you're getting paid, well, I wouldn't say you're getting paid, I'm sure whatnot is holding the money, just like most of these uh, services do now. Uh, everybody complains about eBay, but whatnot's recreating the same problems so that whatnot can be profitable on your behalf and the seller's behalf. Uh, so the the transaction or the processing or the you know the the creation of the transaction I should say is that's all automated through whatnot so that streamlines the whole process and makes it really easy as a buyer and a seller I think uh, to complete the transaction so the items kind of go up for a live auction and the seller has the option I think it defaults to a minute <clears throat> you could take it down to whatever you want thirty seconds forty five seconds. And it's really up to you. Um, they ship this one book here in a Gemini mailer. Uh, 
Uh, looks like they included a couple of uh, additional thicker boards around it, or uh, it looks like just a, a couple here. But anyway, let's get the book out so you can see what I bought. And there it is, Tales of Suspense 98. So Torpedo <clears throat> lists their books, and then they, they flip it over here and they show you the condition. And then they're, they're putting it up here on auction. And then it looks like they just write down post-it note just to kind of keep track of things. So we will definitely take this book out and grade it. Um, what I liked about this book, uh, let me get rid of this so you can really see it. Uh, well, I love the book. I've always wanted to add this to my collection and I was able to do this and uh, was really happy to, to add this. Um, what I liked about it from the presentation perspective was the fact that the spine had a very, very tiny minimal uh, miswrapping here. But uh, presentation wise, it looked great, at least on the live auction camera that they were using. So they will sit this up in kind of like an easel or something. Uh, the interesting thing with most of the whatnot auctions, and you have to be very careful, it all depends on the seller. So it depends on how they how they will <clears throat> set the book up, set the set the item up, the listing up, uh, whether they'll, sh they'll actually put the condition there. So what I'll do on whatnot is I'll go through as soon as the live auction starts and see if the seller has the conditions and then you can mark which ones you kind of want to watch. So if you don't want to watch the whole uh, whatnot stream, and I'll get into that here in a second, um, you can kind of just say, ping me when these books come up for sale. Now, a lot of the sellers, or I shouldn't say a lot, uh, what uh, Torpedo specifically, they will kind of add books as they go along to kind of get, so they're kind of working around that system. They want you to watch the whole thing. So instead of like preloading all of the books and you're like, oh, I don't like any of those, they'll maybe only load two or three. And then as they start selling, they'll add a few more, they'll add a few more, they'll add a few more. So you're kind of constantly interacting with their session. So that's their choice and, and that's fine. Um, a lot of times a seller will just say uh, auction lot 57. You don't know what it is, right? So there's different ways, and that depends on the seller. Nothing's perfect. Um, what I've been noticing when you watch what not sellers is they will, they'll, they'll go like this with the book, they'll say. Uh, so we've got Tales of Suspense, number 98, great cap, Black Panther in the cover. We got a 7.5, uh, verify, uh, mine, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then, they, oh, this is just an iconic cover, right? And then you don't hear them talk about the condition ever again. And they do that because they want somebody to slip in and see it and go, well, that looks near mint. And they start, you know, possibly bidding on it. Now, you can always ask, what's the condition? And they'll go, oh, it's very fine. So, right? You're like, what? I didn't see that. That's very fine. Are you sure? Could I see that condition? That's very fine. Like the condition is such a mystery. It's so hilarious. Um, so that's a lot of fun is to figure out what, what is the condition of this item that you're actually bidding on. The other thing they will do is if they're not getting what they want for the book, you will hear, and it's not just Torpedo, you'll hear so many sellers talk about how the bidders are sleeping on it. This needs to go for more than what it is. Um, and if you don't bid this book up, then in future shows, they're not going to list books like this. Now, that could be true. And if I were a seller, I would think the same thing. I would be thinking, well, if I'm not selling my books at fair market value or close to it or, or whatever price you'd want to, to get for your books, if you're not getting value from these auctions, of course you're not going to run them anymore. Like, duh. But when you come over... Uh, when you come across to the buyers as aggressive and threatening like that, and you actually say it, um, I'll be honest, I haven't been back to a torpedo whatnot auction since I got this because of that sort of aggressive attitude. And I've kind of popped into some other sellers and they're kind of doing the same thing. So I don't know if it's just a, a thing you have to do, but it's this, this forced social atmosphere that Instagram and whatnot, they shove in your face like, you owe me as a bidder, you, you're you sleeping on this, you better understand what this book is, you better not let it sell for this. Or Just sell the books, have some fun with it. I would love to 
hear from you if there are whatnot sellers that you like that don't do that, that just kind of hang out, show books. But this constant barrage of hype, it's all out there on the internet anyway. And I'm going to start to open this book so we can see, did it actually turn on the you know, I'll slow it down here. It is a 7.5 very fine minus, and we're going to open this up and look at the gray. But again, just to finish the thought, I hope that not every seller is doing this. I hope that, you know, uh, we, we have some good folks out there in the community that are just selling books and having a good time. But all of the hype is out there. It's all out there. And then I just don't want to hear it if I'm trying to acquire books. That's why I do most of my buying kind of offline, if you will, and just at my own pace. All right, so here's the book. Let's take a look. Uh, so again, the, the color, it's a little on the dull side. Uh, the, the light here in my comic cave does help improve it a little. So that's okay. Um, and it could just be, I think it's just the age and nature of the book. Um, the first thing I notice is this page tear right here. So there, there's, a, there's a significant tear right there in the page. And that's probably a three-quarter inch tear. Right, so already off the bat, you're taking your your worst defect and kind of working backwards. Now, here's the other thing, and I I fell for it. Again, it's all about the hype, right? F uh, buying into the hype of somebody and believing what they're saying. Uh, and some of it takes experience. Some of it takes making mistakes. Like I think clearly, I don't want to say I made a mistake on this book, but I made the mistake of believing what the the auctioneer or the, the live show runner was talking about where they kept saying, you know, with Torpedo, the grades that we give it, we we undergrade. So, you know, seven fives are really eight fives and nines are really nine fours. And that's what they said. Now, there's no guarantee. There's no legally binding contract because it's whatever. I mean, on whatnot, they're playing copyrighted music in the background. So literally, you could say and do whatever you want on the platform. And if you believe it, you believe everything you hear, then it's you're bad as a buyer. So I understand and assume all of that risk and responsibility. I just find it entertaining. I find all of it just really crazy and entertaining. So uh, let's get back to the book and the grading. So we already have that tear. So <clears throat> I, I stopped there to point out, like, they said that the seven fives or any seven five or any grade that they undergrade. Okay, so now we're going to see if that's true or not. Let's look at the spine. Um, so right there, this corner box and everything that looks really good. Uh, no, no real spine issues there. And maybe one right there, but Spine looks to be in really good shape. Staples on the top, but that's okay. A little bit of uh, wear around the staple, that's typical. And that bottom corner, you know, that looks a little, it could be pressed, a couple of little pushes there. But the spine's in really good shape. Um, let me flip it over on the back and take a look at the spine while we're here. And n nothing really here either. So that's nice, that's a good sign. I'm just checking to see if I could tell if the book were... I don't think the book was pressed. I'm seeing pressable defects here. There's a little bit of a fold. Um, tiny bit of a tear there as well. Um, lots of... Uh, it's not necessarily foxing. I don't see the spots or anything, but it's, it's definitely... There's tanning all around it. It gives you kind of like a... It's a typical book of this... Uh, Book of this age that has that sort of vignetting in the book. So there's definitely some tanning and discoloration around all of the edges. So if I'm just looking at the back, um, we also have this problem too, and I don't know what that is. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if that was something they tried to clean up or what, but that's kind of permanent on the book now. So we have that discoloration. Now again, I've been dinged for color rub. Uh, around that much. So already we're dropping it to a 9.6 because of that. The tanning and everything, 9.4, 9.2. Um, this crease down here, probably still keeping it in the 9.92. Um, there's another tear back here. So now we're down to around the 9. There's a fold and a tear, probably in the 8.5. Fold up there. 
still holding strong at an 8.5, I think. <clears throat> the front cover looks good. There's a bit of a dimple right in there. Um, down here in this corner, we've got some color breaking issues. Not a lot of color breaking issues, so I, I will give the book that. But now we're down here, so we're definitely in the 8 category already. Um, another push in here. So could it benefit from a press? Well, if I'm keeping this for the PC, which I would like to, and if I did want to get it graded, I probably would just send it off to CCS or somebody else to press it. I don't think I would press it um, just because I don't really know what I could do to improve it. Uh, I could possibly work on that flap and get that down, but I already had this as an eight and we haven't even addressed the, uh, the tear yet. So that's, that's probably keeping the book at an eight. I think we're, you could start to make the case for the seven five. The, the thing that's holding it back for me from really dropping is the spine is in great condition. Um, there's really just some, some color breaking around the staple there, but it's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, so I'm very pleased with the fact that um, we've got a really, really nice, solid, strong spine here. I'm just going to open it up and make sure that uh, the uh, center fold and everything, it's, it's all attached. Yeah, staples look good in the middle. So very strong copy. So I think that the grading is is fair, um, but now what about the tear here? That's the big thing for me, is I, I do have it in, right now, I think I said an eight, you know, leaning towards the seven five. I think the light is catching a little bit of a fold there. Um, so I, I think it would benefit from a press. I don't know if I would press it, um, but then you've got the tear right here. So the tear for me, is almost a whole grade. I, I, I feel like that's that's really um, kind of the thing right there. And I don't want to I don't want to drop it under seven five just to kind of make a point here. So I want to I want to be fair, and I'll leave the grade as seven five. How's that? So it certainly wasn't a situation where oh they they grossly undergraded this is a nine i don't it's not a nine the, the tear alone and any tear is an immediate like full grade drop at least in my experience um especially a tear that long like if it was just a little bit of a cut in the page you know that that's taking a nine eight down to maybe a nine four nine two right but that's a that's a pretty significant tear um and any professional grader is going to measure that tear. And basically, they have a system. So if it's an eighth of an inch and, and so forth, and they just keep going. So let's leave that book as a 7.5. Let's say, you know, they don't undergrade, but they, they actually grade pretty accurately. I would say that a 7.5 is a fair grade for that book. The argument could be made 7 to 8. Again, these are the nuances that you'd have to take up with a professional grader. Um, the other thing with the book too, uh, let me just pop right back in. Uh, this is white pages, which is nice. So this is a strong copy, right? White, very, very vibrant white pages. So this would come back from CGC as a 7.5 white pages, I believe, which I think is, is very fair. Now let's flip over to the order itself. So here is the order. And uh, again, I show you what I pay for these books. So as strong as the book is, as strong as it looked like to me, as strong as the grade was, um, I didn't get it cheap. I had to pay $70 for it, plus $4 shipping and $6.66 .60, tax. So this is another thing. Um, that's an additional $10.66 that I may not have to pay on another platform. So it's something to consider. So my total cost we move over is $80 and 66 cents. Um, and then I summarize it here. And then what I'm going to do is plug in the grade. So before I plug in the grade, it has a fair market value of $60. So even at $80, I didn't necessarily overpay. I, again, it depends on the age, like this is silver age. So 
you know, what is fair market value and cover price? Is it typically, you know, fine minus, uh, fine, like what, you know, very good plus, like what, what is the grade that defines the cover price fair market value? Whereas a new release, I would say fair market value is 9.4 and above. I think it shifts depending on the era. But, uh, you know, fair market value is $60. It is what it is. We don't know what condition they um, these books go for when they calculate that value. So if I plug in my grade of a 7.5, it has a GPA CGC value of $159. So that my CGC profit, my, my additional value, if I were to get this book slabbed, uh, is an additional $46. So that's after I purchased the book, the, the cost to purchase shipping, the cost to grade the book, um, the, the grading fees, the, the, the cost to ship the book to CGC and back and so on. All of that's factored in here. And I would stand to add $46 of value. So not bad. Um, now, this book is not a, a key. It is a book that you can find. So it's not, I, I didn't necessarily invest in the rarity of it. Uh, Heritage will often have eights and nines white pages come up, you know, in the ballpark of $100 to $150. So it's all right there. It's all good. Um, but I think I got a pretty good deal. I think I got a good deal. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you know, I see the tear in the book and I look at it and go, well, from a presentation perspective, um, you know, would I hang that book on my wall? And I, I think because of the art, it, the tear is kind of hidden. Um, and the fact that it's white pages, I think, is, is a good thing. So I want to wrap this up and leave on a positive note. So I think I got a good deal. Um, however, I had to wait for the, them to post this book during this session. I don't know how many books they ran, 20, 30, 50 books in the one particular session. And Torpedo has sessions and whatnot all the time. I think they do four or five a day. Uh, maybe more. If they have a book like this, there's usually like a centerpiece, right, for uh, some some prime book that they're talking about, teasing you with, or something. And it's always towards the end. Maybe they throw a, a medium-ish desirable book or key in the middle. But it's all, it's it's this big tease. It's this big tease of, I'm going to give you deals, I'm going to undergrade books, I'm going to hype stuff. These books are iconic. This is the, uh, you're sleeping on it. Like the madness of having to hear all of that. Um, I don't know what to do about it because I would like to use it. But the the time it took me to get through a single torpedo whatnot auction to get to the actual book that I want, the a book that I wanted to pay for and, and acquire to add to my PC all in all, I'm very happy about it. I'm, I'm happy to have the book and I'm happy to have it in a 7.5. That, that's fine. I, that's, well, it's, it's very fine Midas, but that's all good to me. But I feel like I've, I've paid in emotional currency of, of having to deal with all of it. And the WhatNot platform, while it's great, it's, it's definitely, it still feels buggy and, and beta. Um, it's still showing that this item is in, in transit and I've, I've had it now for several days. So there's a lot of kinks to be work, work, uh, worked out. If you want to sell on there, again, that's a whole other video. Um, you have to go through an application and they're really picking and choosing. They want people with a really large social media and online presence to, again, further hype and promote the platform. Um, they don't want just a, you can't just sign up as a seller. Um, you have to have, you know, potentially, um, a lot of eBay feedback, uh, YouTube following, Instagram followings, and all of that. So they want to kind of build up some sort of uh, formula to figure out what your reputation is as a seller. And then they will decide whether you're worthy or not of selling on their platform. So that's another thing. I can sign up on Atomic Avenue and sell today. I can sign up on eBay and sell today. Now, does that make that better because there's no like background check? Um, not necessarily. But on whatnot, the background check is, do you have a following? If Are you popular? And if you're popular, you get to sell. Um, if you're a, uh, an unpopular uh, person, but you're a buyer, uh, you can buy all day long. Uh, so I don't know. 
it, it's all just kind of funny to me when I can sit back and search the internet and search around for five or 10 minutes and I could bid on this book on heritage um, anytime it comes up and I would end up paying more than what I paid for and whatnot. But the question that I have for you is, is your time, the time that you spend staring at your phone, you know, hoping that your item comes up, all of that, listening to basically this, this long commercial for the seller as they flip through books, them berating you about things that you should be bidding on, also people in the session, users, also chatting about how great the book is. They're not bidding on it, but they're talking about how awesome it is. That whole experience, is it worth it? Um, you know, if the fair market value of the book was $60, I paid 70 or 80 if you factor in shipping and everything like that. Did I really get a steal? Was it worth all of my time? It's maybe a break even. I don't really know. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of time to sit on my phone and look at auction after auction after auction. Um, and if you do, that's great. But I find using other uh, means uh, to just kind of casually search for books. And I think that's why people still go to eBay. I know everybody hates eBay and they want you to, eBay is the worst. Please come to my live auction on Instagram. And I could just keep going on this forever. So anyway, let's wrap this up here. Uh, that was my experience. That was the book I got. Uh, all in all, I think the grade was fair. Um, if you think it, it's it's worse or it's in better shape uh, than 7.5, please leave a comment below. If you've had a good or bad experience or whatnot, let me know. Uh, let me know what I'm missing. What, what am I missing about this? Um, because I would like to embrace the platform, but I just don't know how. So um, there you go. I appreciate you watching. Happy collecting. See you next time.